Hello children! Today we'll be reading a story called Pico the Gnome, which was rewritten by Martina Mueller. We have some friends with us today who we'll see in a moment. There you'll see a gnome. And we have a very big boy who's there and two littler ones, a mushroom girl with a mushroom hat on and a little girl with a mushroom sweater on. This story has a giant in it. We'll get to learn more about the giant soon. Let's get started. Sweetness from the flowers, a candle from the bees, or our hearts a storm. Down in the forest, under a big oak tree, Pico the gnome was having an afternoon snooze. His snores shook the leafy branches. Two little birds flew down whistling. Wake up, Pico, wake up. It's your turn to cook this week in the gnome's kitchen, and you're going to be late. Pico woke with a start, leapt to his feet, and marched off calling, thank you little birds, over his shoulder. Soon, Pico was hard at work in the gnome's kitchen. He stoked up the fire, filled the pot with water, and before long, a good stew was simmering. While Pico stirred, he sang a little song that he made up. Stir the pot, add a lot, turn up tops, nuts and hops, leaves and roots, tasty shoots, sprinkle salt, barley malt, Steady, steady, soon it's ready. When the gnomes came home from work and ate it, they all said it tasted delicious. After the meal, Pico went for an evening stroll gathering firewood and tasty herbs for the next day. The sun was setting behind the distant mountains, clothing the world in a golden glow. Pico stopped to daydream. Who might live over behind the mountains? He often wondered what lay beyond them. The evening air smelled sweet with blossoms. Pico began to feel drowsy. He rested his head on a mossy pillow and his eyes closed. The stars shone. All was at peace in the forest. Softly, a fairy emerged from the mist among the meadow flowers 
and sang, weaving dreams around Pico. Sweetly sleep, dreaming deep. Have no fear, resting here. Let my song make you strong. For after night will come a fight. Dawn came and touched the mountains with delicate colors. But there was a distant rumbling in the forest. The ground shook and the birds fluttered up from the trees, frightened. A giant, a giant, the birds warned. Gnomes and animals who had been sleeping in the forest ran to the safety of their caves and burrows. Only Pico heard nothing he woke up happily after a blissful sleep and climbed over rocks to wash in a cool waterfall. A squirrel called out, hurry, can't you hear the giant coming? But Pico couldn't hear anything over the splashing of the waterfall. I'm sorry, he smiled at the squirrel. I didn't catch what you said. The squirrel shouted, run, then dashed off through the trees. Run? Why should I run? thought Pico. The next moment, the trees were pushed aside and a giant boot landed right beside him. Oh no! Now Pico understood the squirrel's warning. He raced off as fast as he could. The giant snorted with rage and smashed his huge club on the ground. Pico ran and dodged here and there as the giant's feet crashed down left, then right, crushing trees and frightening birds and animals. Pico started to feel cross. He gathered all his courage and turned to face the giant, trying to look stout and bold. Stop it, he shouted. The giant, towering over him, stopped. He looked surprised. How could someone so small be so brave? Pico thought very quickly. He said to the giant, I have been searching for the strongest, kindest person in the world to be my friend. And I was told that the strongest, kindest person in the world lives beyond the mountains. What's your name and where do you come from? I am Gongura, said the giant, and I come from beyond the mountains. Ah, Pico replied, I have been looking for you for such a long time, Gungura, and I found you at last. My name is Pico. The giant stooped down with a smile saying, hello, Pico. Pico breathed a sigh of relief. Do you really want to be my friend? Asked the giant, suddenly warm and gentle. He lifted Pico onto his knee. Yes, I do, said Pico. No 
gnomes and giants should be friends. We can help each other. You can protect us with your great strength and we can find treasures in the ground to share with you. I never thought of that, said the giant. I thought gnomes were like annoying little ants that got under my feet. Let's be friends, Gungura, said Pico to the giant. Yes, cried the giant, leaping up and sending Pico flying through the air. Oh, I'm so sorry. The giant gently picked Pico off the ground. I hope I didn't hurt you. No, I'm fine, Pico reassured him. Now you go home to the mountain, treading carefully. I'll go back to the village and tell the other gnomes about you. Come again soon and we will all be friends. I'd like that. Thank you, Pico, replied the giant. I'll try not to stand on any gnomes on my way home. He waved goodbye. Pico left with glee. He had saved the gnomes in the forest from the giant, and he had made a new friend. He would tell his story while eating another pot of delicious stew tonight. As he danced home, he made up a happy song about the celebration to come. Rumble bum, says my foot. Stumble thumb, says my boot. Loaves of bread, good to eat. Droughts of air for a treat, bowls of stew with fun and laughter, spoons of honeycomb come after. What a wonderful day Pico had had. Stars, moon, sun. Now our story is done. May it rest in our hearts and the light now shine from within. <laughs>